How you guys doing? Feeling good? Everybody looks so good. Okay, here to present the first honoree of the evening, please welcome everybody, Ron Underwood. Hello, Bettina Kugel-Hirsch, known to all of us as Tina, grew up in New York City where her father was in business with Oliver Stone's father. And those two kids played together from the time they were toddlers. Neither one knew what the future would hold for their careers, but now we know. I'm sure all you ACE members know Tina for her years of service to this organization. As Steve said, there's, she was on the board for 25 years. She's been a champion of the internship and mentorship programs. And Tina was the first woman to be president of this prestigious group. <laughs> Tina's first job in the film business was so perfect for her. She was an assistant editor on Woodstock, one of the defining films of the 60s era. The true spirit of youthful ener energy that defined Woodstock lives in Tina to this day. <laughs> Tina had a, a special skill that was put to use on the film. Her grandfather had taught her to lip read when she was a child. And so once that was discovered in the editing room, she was given the job of checking sync on every foot of film <laughs> at Woodstock, which was plenty of film. My understanding is that the original cut of, the, of Woodstock was over eight hours long. In fact, in order to reduce the running time of the film, they came up with that idea of using multi-panel screens so that simultaneous footage could be shown. Not long after she started editing, Roger Corman discovered her talent and she began cutting movies for New World Pictures. There she cut Big Bad Mama, Death Race 2000, Eat My Dust, all classics from Roger Corman. And she was soon editing then for Joe Dante, who she met at New World, and whom Tina made some wonderful fun films, including Gremlins, The, the, the Twilight Zone, Explorers. Tina entered the world of television, cutting the pilot in 1994 for Party of Five. She later edited Aaron Sorkin's The West Wing, which brought her two Emmys, <laughs> Emmy nominations and an Ace Award. She was on a streak for awards. All three of the TV movies I did with Tina following The West Wing ended up with awards and nominations. Tina and I worked together on an adaptation of the Ann Tyler novel back when we were bro uh, grown ups, starring Blythe Danner, Peter Fonda, Faye Dunaway, and Jack Palance. The film received Emmy nominations for Tina and Blythe Danner, as well as an Ace nomination for Tina. And believe me, Tina deserved those nominations. We, we had, we had a, a, a very um, long scene in that film where we had terrible production problems. And because we didn't get the coverage we had hoped to get, Tina was ahead of her time when she came up with the brilliant solution to resize shots and create enough coverage to make the scene work. And her solution now is commonly used as a technique, but Tina saved my ass. <laughs> Something that editors do for directors all the time. And thank you for that. Tina's always had my back, and she and Carl have been friends for decades. She is a champion of story, of characters, and she cares deeply about her work and is a wonderful partner and collaborator. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Tina's work in this tribute reel. Fade in. This is Junior Bruce, your buddy, buddy, and mine. And I'll be giving you the blow-by-blow, play-by-play when the kings and queens of the open road roar onto the track. Do I hear the sound of engines?
place is so bad, I'm almost tempted to turn around and go back. Don't you realize who you're dealing with here? I forgot to tell you guys, and they're really important. Number one, he hates bright lights, we know that. But you gotta keep him out of the sunlight. Sunlight will kill him. Number two, keep him away from water. Don't give him any water to drink. And whatever you do, don't give him a bath. And probably the most important thing, don't ever feed him after midnight. So shut it from the chandelier. We wish him another one. Yeah. You're walking along the street or you're at a party. Suddenly dig. You're looking in someone's eyes. You suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big. I just love you're those tater tots. Watching your diet. Declining a Charlotte Russe, accepting a big Way out of the clear blue sky, it's suddenly gal and guy This could be the start of something This could be the heart of something This could be the start of something big Zoe's down from Hanover, I'm making chili for everyone tonight All right, uh, you know what, let's do this Everybody, look down at the big seal in the middle of my carpet. Now, everybody look back up at me. Zoe's coming down from Hanover, and I'm making chili for everyone tonight. That's great. great. That's That's chili. Chili. Terrific. What would be the next thing that challenges us? That makes us go farther and work harder. You know that when smallpox was eradicated, it was considered the single greatest humanitarian achievement of this century. Surely we can do it again. As we did in a time when our eyes looked towards the heavens, and with outstretched fingers, we touched the face of God. He's going, kid. Here's to absent friends. And the ones that are here now. Ladies and gentlemen, the true spirit of youthful energy, Tina Hirsch. those tater tots. <laughs> I'd like to thank Ron Underwood for that wonderful introduction, and I'm going to start crying. Uh, I'm so happy that you and your wife, Sandy, can be here tonight to share this honor with me. And uh, louder. Sorry, I have complaints from the office. I'm the office, the audience. <laughs> OK. Uh, I'd like to thank the editor, Alfonso Carrion, for putting that reel together, and Jenny McCormick, 
and Kevin Tent for their supervision. Also, I'd like to thank the ACE Board of Directors for choosing me to receive this award. It's a great honor to be recognized by my peers, and I deeply appreciate it. Where would an editor be without her hardworking assistance? I'd like to thank mine now. Nancy Hurley, sitting down there. Greg Gantz and Tom Binnen. And I know Tom's here because I saw him earlier. Where are you? Way in the, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, seriously, they are all hard working like they, okay, I'll keep reading. <laughs> All of them are now editors. It was you guys who provided me with the calm assurance of a well-run cutting room, exactly what I needed to do my best work. I've always been most comfortable as a team player, and you guys have been my team of all-stars. I mean, aren't we lucky to have each other? I don't know, I think so. Um, As I've said many times before, editors are my favorite people. Thank you one and all, fellow editors and colleagues, for being professional collaborators and my best friends. Over the years, I've often been asked by film students and young editors, how did you get your start? I've always believed in the magic of the universe. If something is meant to happen, it will. <clears throat> Okay, sorry, I lost my place. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Hold on, just give me a second. <laughs> okay. I've, I've always believed in the magic of the universe. If something is meant to happen, it will. Honestly, I've lived through this over and over. That's why whenever opportunity knocked, I always said yes and jumped on board without debate or overthinking it. When I was about 20, my mother and a friend were talking about her friend's older daughter, who was a freelance, freelance film editor. I listened to the conversation and secretly decided that this is what I wanted to do, even though I didn't know what it was. <laughs> There was no strong reason, I just knew it. It was a familiar sound. It wasn't until much later on that with a sense of determination and a lot of luck, I found my way to a New York cutting room where I hoped I could learn how to be an assistant editor. Even though this was before there were internship programs for film editors, I came up with the idea to work for free. It was an offer they could not refuse, <laughs> and I was hired. Afterwards, with an assistant editor credit on my resume, it was Thelma Schoonmaker who gave me my next opportunity as her assistant on the documentary Woodstock. <laughs> what I'll always remember and really appreciate is that she would tell me what she needed, and I had to figure out how to do it on my own, which is really, that's good education. I'll always be grateful to her for the experience we had together on Woodstock. I think she's here tonight, but I don't know. Are you? I don't see, I don't see anything. Over there, the whole, all of you are Thelma's? <laughs> Actually, all of you are T's. That's what we used to call her in the old days. She was T, but I was T too in my house, so it was a little confusing. Uh, okay, 
Anyway, if you're here, Thelma, thank you again. And uh, I hope I get to see you before you go back home. Uh, okay, in 1972, in Hollywood, I met the man who would change my life for get forever. That man, like the prince in a Disney dream, opened the door into my new life as a film editor. And that wonderful man is not here tonight, I thought he would be, and uh, Mr. Roger Corman. And there are many of us fledglings of his here tonight. He really started a lot of people um, on their careers. Okay. Anyway, just to pass this on, if he should happen to hear it, thank you, Roger, for believing in me, for giving me the chance to learn my craft, and for being the smartest and most film-savvy producer I've ever worked with. He's a great guy. And he's like 95 now, and he still looks like he's 50. <laughs> Uh, it was also at your production company, New World, where I met some of the most talented and inventive filmmakers I've ever known. People like Joe Dante, Alan Arkish, Louis Teague, who's right there. <laughs> um, Paul Bartel and John Davison. Roger, thank you for all that and more. It's the editor who puts together the first cut of a movie. We're the ones who make the first decisions about how to tell the story best. I've always been a firm believer that when a scene looks right to you, it's right, which is to say it's important to trust your instincts. The footage can always be arranged and rearranged in many different ways, but what's best for the first go round is what looks best to you, the film editor. So when you look at a scene and it plays the way you think it should, it's the right time to move on, which for me tonight is about now. <laughs> Thank you.